Hello and welcome to Crafty Nana Dawn. This is Dawn and I'm so happy you've joined me today. We're going to be doing three coastal DIYs today and we're going to get started with DIY number one. From the Dollar Tree, you're going to take this um, lighthouse. It's the metal lighthouse. I did fill in the hole with some spackle and we're going to paint it with um, chalk paint. I'm using the Waverly White chalk paint. You can use any color you want. <clears throat> um, I do find that chalk paint does cover really well on the metal. And one of the tricks with chalk paint is to start with a wet brush. Um, it took three coats of this white to completely cover the metal on the lighthouse. After you have all of this painted, put your base coat on. I took a ruler and I lined straight lines. I'm doing this black and white um, <clears throat> as a representation of um, this lighthouse I went to in North Carolina called Brody Island and I just loved that lighthouse. I thought it was so pretty and that island was gorgeous. So I'm doing this as a reminder of that place. That's why I'm doing black and white. Um, if you choose to do the black and white, I started with the black first, and then I went every other one with the black and white. One of the tricks to working with chalk paint or um, any paint in general is to make sure that you have a damp brush, not soaking wet, but damp. And with chalk paint, I do find that if you rinse your brush off frequently, the paint does seem to go um, on smoother. Also, to get that nice crisp line, use the side of your paintbrush, and that will help you to get that nice crisp line. As you can see with the black, I went every other one for the black. Um, also, on the windows, I painted all of those black. Again, using the side of, of my paintbrush to help me get that nice crisp line. Um, I'll insert a picture from my vacation of this lighthouse. It, if you're ever in North Carolina, you, you've got to go there. It's so pretty. Um, anyway, you see how I'm dipping my brush into the water and then into the paint. My um, Waverly Black paint was a little bit thick today for some reason. I either need to get a new one or try to mix some water into it. Uh, next we're going to take a black sharpie and this is the fine tip point black sharpie and just to give it a little bit of character and some depth I just drew some lines on there and they're just little squiggle lines dot squiggle line dot. Um, on the white, I just did the outside edges. I did not do the bottom piece of the white because we're going to do something else with that. The next, what you see here, is a white gel pen. And I did the same thing on the black, only I went all the way around the black with a little squiggle line, a dot, a squiggle line, and a dot. And I'm doing that on all of the black except for the windows. I do not do the windows. And once this is done, um, I took my Mod Podge and I'm putting a thick layer on the bottom. And this sand also came from the Dollar Tree. Um, it's a sand color sand. And uh, I put that on so that it kind of looked like the bottom of the, the beach, the sand. I don't know. I'll insert a picture of the lighthouse before we move to the next step. Here's a picture I took of the Body Island Lighthouse with the correct pronunciation. Okay, so next we're going to take the Crafter Square wood plank hanger, the 24 inch one in white, and we're going to wrap some jute twine around the top part of it four times. And then we will secure it in the back with some hot glue. After we get this secured in the back, you're going to take the ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It, to me, it looks kind of like fishnet um, 
it looks very nautical. This is the off-white one, the beigey color one, and I put that around, right underneath where that jute twine is, as you can see here, and secured that. After this is on, then we're going to come again with the jute twine on the bottom of that ribbon so that it sam the ribbon is sandwiched in between the jute twine. And then we're going to take some shells from the Dollar Tree and arrange them on that um, ribbon how you like. And I just picked four out of a bag that I got at the Dollar Tree, arranged them the way I wanted, and then I secured them with hot glue. <clears throat> These shells, um, you will need to clean them. Mine were dirty. I don't really measure very well, <laughs> so I, I didn't measure. I just took the lighthouse, I put it on the plank, put it where I wanted it, and then took that jute twine and um, wrapped it around four times, putting the lighthouse in the middle. We are going to have to cut a piece of this off, and I will show you how to do that. Um, so on the bottom, I just repeated the same process as I did with the top. And then with my, my ruler, I took um, my X-Acto knife, and I made some deep cut marks, and then just went over that until it, it cut. And then I took um, a piece of some sandpaper and just kind of smoothed that over. Uh, after, all of, after you're done with that, you're going to take some Mod Podge and we're going to seal the lighthouse. Um, now when, I, when you put it on the, the sand, you're going to kind of use a patting motion because if you try to sweep it across, it's going to um, knock the sand off. So as you can see here, I'm just patting that on. Uh, I wanted this to have some dimension, so I took some popsicle sticks and what I did was I glued three popsicle sticks together and I made a set of three. And we're going to glue those onto the back of the lighthouse so that the lighthouse has some dimension to it. <clears throat> now with this, because it is metal, I found that hot glue does not really, it's not long term. So I found this glue at the Dollar Tree and I thought I'd give it a try. So far it's working really well. I did use a little bit of hot glue to give me that instant bond so that I didn't have to wait. Um, so I do suggest that you use something other than just hot glue on here. And I did use that glue again with the hot glue on the back of the popsicle sticks so that I got a tighter bond. Um, since it was going to be standing out on my um, plaque. So as I was saying, with those shells, um, they are really dirty <laughs> and they weren't very shiny. So what I did was I took some bleach and water and soaked them in there for a couple hours and that made all the difference in the world. They, those shells look completely different than they did when I took them out of the package. So you're just going to line up your your lighthouse. Um, one of the things with this plank that's good is you can just kind of use that middle plank to line the tip of your lighthouse up to kind of get so that you can get that um, in the middle. Next, I took a piece of jute and I had some leftover white beads from another project and some um, plain wood beads and I put. Um, these beads on here because I'm going to do that on the top of the lighthouse and what I did was I put <coughs> the neutral color bead then a white bead then a neutral color bead there's six beads in total so that there's three on each side and then I just came up through the back of that plank and I tied a double knot um, to secure it uh, I like that look. If you don't like that look, then you could do it the opposite way. But I do like the way that looks with that knot coming through. It just, to me, looks nautical. Um, and as you can see here, I'm just making it the size I want, tying that knot again. 
And then I'm going to flip it over and because it has those beads on there, I'm just going to secure our hot glue that twine to the back. And then here's a look at our finished project. I think it came out so pretty. I, I really like how this came out. And um, here's a picture of it completely finished. If you would, please um, give my video a like and share, subscribe to help get it promoted. Also, comments are very welcome. DIY number two. For DIY number two, we're doing a driftwood seahorse. And as you can see, I just showed you the box um, from Target. It was vase filler with the shells um, <clears throat> from the Dollar Tree. I picked out five shells three bigger ones and two slightly smaller ones and we're going to hot glue those to that outside or back fin and next before we can put on the next set of shells um, I needed to put some of that driftwood on so that I had some place to adhere the next set of shells because we're going to set those shells in between the three shells on the bottom. So the two shells will go on top and you do need the driftwood um, on there so that you can glue the back of the shells to the driftwood and you're gonna set it back just a little bit from the bottom ones. As you, you'll see here in just a second, um, I'm gonna apply the hot glue and then we just put that in the middle part of the two shells and you can see where I'm securing that <coughs> to the driftwood. Once we have that on it's just a matter of taking the driftwood uh, vase filler vase filler? <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, and we're just going to be putting that on the seahorse just finding pieces and fitting them in where, we, where you think they'll fit in the best. Um, you will need to do a little bit of cutting with this and I'll show you that um, in a little bit on how to do that. But basically I just put them on. They do, you will have to overlap some. Um, <clears throat> and there was a point in time in this where I thought, oh, this looks horrible, but I kept going. And I'm glad I did because this ended up being my favorite project. Um, hey, let me know in the comments below uh, which project is your favorite by saying number one, number two, or number three. Um, so anyways, moving on, we're just, like I said, you're, you're basically just gluing these on. It's, it's very simple. Um, until you get to the cutting part. That was a little bit harder. But I do have a trick for you that I did not know when I did mine. Uh, I was using some scissors and wire cutters. But then it dawned on me after I was done, of, on, of course, to use these gardening shears. And they cut so much easier. So if you have a pair of gardening shears, um, I would suggest you use that to cut these wood, but be careful, don't, don't hurt yourself. Um, and I inserted this little clip just to show you how well they, that they did cut. I wasn't having to struggle with it at all. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened to this footage. It's blurry. Um, I don't know if something was on my lens or I, I really don't know what happened. Um, but here I'm showing you that I would just put the piece of driftwood on and then I would turn it over and with my marker I outlined the seahorse so that I would get the shape I wanted. And then if there's any rough spots I would um, just take this finger sander I have and just sand that. I didn't sand it smooth, I just sanded it so that it would have the shape because I don't want any part of this to be smooth. I want it to still look that rustic, driftwoody, like it drifted from the sea look, I guess. <laughs> and here you can see, I was really struggling with this, trying to get these cut. Um, 
So I ended up using my wire cutters and um, these scissors are Fisker scissors. They're, I highly recommend them. They're great. They, they cut everything. Um, so I just keep doing this all the way around and I'm going to show you again how I put that, held it with my finger and then just drew around it and then just cut it the way, the shape I wanted. For the, it, this um, vase filler had thicker pieces and thinner pieces. I recommend using the thinner pieces to um, use, use that the ones for the ones you have to cut basically. Um, and then I took some Waverly chalk paint and I mixed some water in it and we're going to dry brush. <clears throat> for the dry brush you want to make sure that you pat a lot of that paint off. Um, I even suggest that you take a piece and kind of test that so that you can see um, to get it the color that you want. Now I went across the grain of the driftwood so that just the raised pieces of that driftwood would be that white color. And you want to start out so that you're doing it lightly because it's easier to build up than it is to take off. Also, I added a, another shell, a bigger shell for a fin. And I just showed you that I just hot glued that on. And then because I wanted it standing up a little bit, I made sure that I put a bunch of hot glue on the back of there. Next, I'm going to make the hanger for this. I took some um, white macrame cording that I have from the, the Dollar Tree and I put a, um, a bead on there. This is just one of the plain beads. And I hot glued that to the back where the hole for the, um, the seahorse is. Once that is secured down, I also take a piece of um, that masking tape and I just put that over the top just to give it some extra secureness. And I do use hot glue for this also. You could use a piece of paper too if you have a piece of paper that just would, I think it's just going to help um, that macrame cord from, from um, unraveling and just give it a little bit of extra secureness. It's, this isn't heavy at all. It's very light, so it, it's not going to, it should be easy to hang. Um, and that was basically it. I, I really hope you like it. Um, this one I think was my favorite. I, I really love how this came out. And here's your close up. And you can pause it at any point in time so that um, if you needed to see something closer. And then here's that, the way that looks hanging up. Um, DIY number three. All the supplies shown are from the Dollar Tree, except for the spackle. And those tools in the package, those are actually cake decorating tools. And the Dollar Tree does sell those. So we're going to start with the fish. And these are from the um, Shore Living um, line. And we are going to be doing three of them. But I'm only going to show you how to do one because the other two are done the exact same way as the one that we're going to be decorating. So we're going to start by putting the spackle on the side of the fish all the way around, um, just like you're decorating a cake. Um, the tool that I'm using is actually my Cricut tool from, from the Dollar Tree. I'm not a cake decorator, so I don't have any cake decorating tools. <laughs> but this seemed to work fine. It, it helped me get that all spread out um, on the sides. Next, I'm going to take a, a squirt bottle with water and I'm just going to spray that. And with my finger, I'm going to lightly go over that just to smooth it out. Um, if you're good with using the, the tool and smoothing it out, then you could do that. I'm not. That's probably why I don't decorate cakes is because nobody wants my fingers in their frosting. Uh, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, anyways, I use my finger to get this nice and smooth and water. Um, that water is the kind of the key because that really does help you to get to, help you to smooth it out. Oh my gosh, I can't talk anymore. Uh, next, we're going to do the top of it. 
<clears throat> we're going to put that spackle on the top and um, we're going to spread that out and we're going to do the same thing just on the top. We're going to spread it out and then use the water to help smooth it out. Um, I only did part of the fish and smoothed it out and then did the other part of the fish. Um, <clears throat> as you can see here I'm spreading the water and then I just smooth it with my finger. Uh, the key is using doing it lightly. You want to, if you're using your finger, just do it lightly. Don't push down because then you'll just make marks on it. But I found if I just went over it lightly, I was able to get that nice and smooth. Um, I'm only going to be decorating one side of these fish um, because where I plan on putting it, only one side's going to be showing. But if you want to do these and set them on a table or something, then you would want to do both sides but I'm just gonna do one side. So now that we have this, this fish completely um, covered with the spackle, I let it set for a couple of hours just until it started to get that white look. That helps make it easier to be able to put the design in. With one of those cake decorating tools, the one with the round ball, you saw me make the eye, and then the other cake decorating tool that had the sharp end, I don't know what these are called. I just drew out my pattern of how I thought it would go. And this is just freehand. Um, so don't be afraid to do that. Just freehand it. And you don't have to do the pattern that I'm doing. You could make your own pattern, really, if you wanted, or make three different patterns. I just chose to do all three. All three the same. Um, <clears throat> after I've got this drawn, I'm going to take this tool, this is one of the cake decorating tools, and I'm going to take the tip and I'm going to place it right in that line and I'm going to hold it at a 45 degree angle and I'm going to pull it toward me. And what this is doing is in the back it's making like a swooping um, line and you will be taking off some of the um, that spackle. And I'm going to continue doing this for all of just the thin looking ones or half round looking ones. I'm not sure what you would call these. Scales, scales, that's it, scales. <coughs> After you have the scales done, you can see here that it does add a, a lot of dimension to it doing it this way. And then I just go back to that pointy cake decorating thing and I just redefine the lines. I make them look deeper and a little bit cleaner. Don't worry if you have a little bit of unevenness on the top, because we will be sanding this once it's dry. Basically, you just want to make sure you get the shape that you want. And then after it's completely dry, I let this sit overnight. Um, then I took uh, some 220 sandpaper, 220 grit sandpaper, and I went over the top of it and you just want to do this lightly and just like when you're painting something you're just going to be doing it in layers <clears throat> so i did my first sanding very lightly kind of cleaned it off see where saw where i was at and then sanded some more until it was to where i wanted it to be um, so that's how you're going to do the top part and the sides and then on the corners of the sides where the side and the top meet. I'm not sure I, hopefully you can understand that. Um, I just kind of rounded that a little bit so that it didn't have such a sharp edge. <clears throat> and then for the lines, for all of the lines and the scales, you are gonna sand those uh, a little bit also. And you can see here what I did is I folded the sandpaper and I just took the folded side of that sandpaper and just kind of went through the lines just to give me a little bit of a smoother more defined look and I did that for the lines that needed it I'm not sure if all of the lines needed it but just the ones that did and then I did the same thing for the scales I went through with that sandpaper and just really defined um, where or got the bumps out lumps whatever you want to call um, <coughs> And you're just going to continue that until it's done. Once that's done, you're going to get clean it off. I took a damp towel and just kind of wiped it off. That's why it's a little bit pink. 
and then I'm going to take um, my white Waverly chalk paint and I painted this. I only gave it one coat um, because we're going to be doing other things to it so it really doesn't need more than one coat. So we're going to paint the top and the sides. Next I'm going to take my Mod Podge and for this just on the part you're going to try not to get it in the lines. Just the raised parts um, is what you're going to be putting the Mod Podge on. Mod Podge on. Um, at first, I was putting the Mod Podge on and then I was sprinkling the sand on it. That's not the way to do it. That just made a heck of a mess. Um, I ended up having to clean out the lines every time I was doing this. So I did find an easier way that I'm going to show you and that's by putting the Mod Podge on. Here, as you can see, I'm still fussing with this. <coughs> it just made a big mess. That's why I left it in here to show you. Okay, now this is the way you want to do it. Take the Mod Podge and tap the Mod Podge on the raised area that you want. You only want to do a little bit at a time. Don't try to do a whole, whole lot at once. Um, depending on where you live. I happen to live where it's really dry, so this was drying really fast. So I only did a little bit at a time. Put that on. Um, you want to put a semi-thick layer on so that you can pick up that sand. And then what I did was I just put the sand on the paper and then I put the fish on there and pressed it down, tapped it off, and that worked so so much easier. So you're just going to continue to do that. Put a little bit of the Mod Podge on, cover you know one little section at a time, put it into the sand, and wipe that off or tap that off. If there was any spots that still needed some um, sand, I would just reapply the Mod Podge and do the same procedure, just dip it in. Um, but this actually did really well doing it this way. And then once this is done, once you get all of this on there, um, we're going to go ahead and coat it with the Mod Podge just to seal all that in. Oh, but first we're going to do the sides. Now for the sides, I just brushed the Mod Podge on and then as you can see I just kind of took the sand and pushed it up against there. Um, I did not want this to be solid like you can see here so I tapped a lot of it off I just wanted it to be um, a little bit sparse on the sides I wanted it to have some but I didn't want it to be overwhelming and I was too lazy to try and follow the pattern onto the sides if you want to do that go ahead <laughs> I just showed you what it looked like so <clears throat> and now after I let that dry a little bit before I started with the Mod Podge and then again I just took a bunch of them not a bunch but fill your brush up with the Mod Podge and um, tap that on don't brush it just tap it in to place so that you're not brushing off your um, sand and you could make these any color you want that Dollar Tree had all kinds of colors of the sand color um, I just happen to like this one the best so I picked that color. Once this is all done, we're just going to set this aside and let it dry. And also don't forget to do the sides. Once it's dry, the Mod Podge is dry, we're going to take some white Waverly chalk paint. And this is optional. Um, I did it to kind of tone down the color and to give it more of a... Um, oh, I can't think of the name of it. I'll think of it in a few minutes. <clears throat> Anyways, you're going to just mix some water in with that white paint and then we're going to brush the white paint onto the fish and what I did was I took a damp mi microfiber cloth because I had an old one laying around and then I tapped the, um, the white paint off and if it still needed a little bit more white paint off, I lightly went over it to um, take that white paint off and this is giving it kind of the look of that it's all together um, 
I want to say mosaic, but it's not mosaic. Um, oh my gosh. Anyways, I, I, I think it just kind of helped it have a uniform look. So once all that is done and it's dried, then I just went over it again with the Mod Pod. What I've tried to achieve is a look of stone for this fish. Okay, the next step is um, from the Dollar Tree, I got these um, wood ovals and then I drilled two holes in them. Um, I made myself a template so that I would get them the same width uh, all the time. Um, and then the dowels, those are actually the barbecue skewers from the Dollar Tree. And I didn't use measurements for this because what you'll do is just make it the size you want um, as long as they're three different sizes. So if you have a particular shelf or something you want to put it in, just use that as your guide. Um, I'm going to paint everything with my white Waverly um, chalk paint and I just put one coat on and then I put um, some wood glue in the little the holes and put the skewers skewers in there uh, in hindsight I would do the next step first which is <laughs> to sand to give it um, a, a more rustic look uh, I didn't think about this until after I'd already glued them in and I just did the edges of um, each of the bases and I'm only showing you how to do one of the bases because they're all done the same. Uh, this is macrame cording that I did purchase at the dollar store. And what I did was I glued a piece down and then I'm just going to wrap it around just the base. And I believe I wrapped it around about four times uh, just to give it a little bit of a dimension. Uh, and then I hot glued it to what I determined to be the back and just kind of tied that off. Next, I'm going to take a piece of that cording and I'm going to glue a piece to the skewer because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be weaving in and out of these skewers just to make like a, um, a little bit of a design. I did not do it so that it was tight. It's very loose. Um, and I'm showing you here, I'm going to weave it in and out. You're going to go in, over, under, over, under. As you can see here, I'm showing you over, under, over, under. Um, and that's just to do it the way you, you want. If you want it thicker, do it thicker. Um, I just did it kind of sparsely because I wanted the, the skewers to show and to kind of have like a fish netting type look and then on the bottom base the um, the bottom of the base I put two rows of the um, of that macrame cording now for the back what I did was where I ended the top part that's where I, I started this and ended the um, the cording for the base so that none of my start end lines were in the front they're all in the back so you're just going to go around with some hot glue and um, attach this cording you will need to every so often I would say like every inch inch and a half put hot glue because of the shape of this um, and then I just did two rows of that <clears throat> oh, here I'm showing you, I forgot to paint the back of this. So when you paint this, um, after you're done sanding, I, I would do the back. And then it's just a matter of putting the fish on and you're all done. And here's a close up of all three of them done. And then a picture of it staged. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please give me a like, share, and subscribe. Um, also leave comments. I really do work hard on these videos for you. So I hope you've enjoyed them. Have a great day. Bye.